Hi there, I'm Bonita again with What's My Name again and have we got an episode for you. Today we have a lot of topics and it will include Greek uh, drama and mythology, Egyptian history and mythology and of course Judaism and the Bible. Um, we're gonna talk about one prince of Egypt, a founder of a religion, we can say that, a horned guy and a major psychological complex called Moses or in Hebrew Moshe now to understand his name uh, we need to understand Moses story stories of Moses begins in the book of Exodus the Israelites are enslaved in Egypt and the Pharaoh demands that all of the sons will be killed and thrown into the Nile uh, one woman from the uh, tribe of Levi, and we'll talk about this tribe, um, says no, and actually she drops her baby boy, not named yet, Moses, um, to the Nile, but inside this basket. So he just flows around and is picked up by Pharaoh's daughter, which pulls him out of the water. To pull someone out of the water in Hebrew is limshot. So Moshe is pulled out of. Uh, many people consider it as delivered, or the meaning of the name is delivery. But actually, it might be an Egyptian name because mes in ancient Egyptian is son. So it is probable. Now, the Bible says that Pharaoh's daughter actually. Uh, knew he was uh, an Israelite. How, you ask? Well, many people say because she saw he was circumcised. Wrong! The Egyptians were circumcised too. Actually, most of the peoples in this region of the Near East back then were circumcised. The Jews were the only ones uh, who had done it as a religious uh, ceremony. So it doesn't mean anything. Anyhow, this Moses grows up as an Egyptian prince, and one day he discovers that he's uh, an Israelite, he's something else, and discovers God, who talks to him out of a burning bush, and the rest is history. Now, I'm going to talk about the uh, history, uh, not as provided in the Bible, but actually as provided by a man who has nothing to do with the Bible besides being Jewish, Sigmund Freud, which is my favorite as a psychology student. Well, uh, Freud offered an interesting theory about Moses, which begins in, you won't believe it, well, it's Freud, Oedipus. King Oedipus, uh, Oedipus Rex, is a uh, play by Sophocles, and a very large uh, psychological complex, as Freud described it, when a child is attracted sexually to his mother and wants to kill his father, blah blah. Our point is that Freud didn't buy the Oedipus story because he thought it, it doesn't make any sense, it happened in Greece. Why, you ask? Well, Thebes, the capital in which Oedipus lives, also exists in Egypt. It was the capital of the ancient Egyptians. The beast that um, Oedipus defeats is a sphinx, which we all know is an Egyptian mythological beast. And the thing is, the reason why um, Oedipus was punished with this fate actually is a sin of his father. <coughs> Which sin do you ask? Well, his father slept with a man. Now, as you well know, the Greeks had no problem at all with homosexuality. And the region where problems with homosexuality emerged was here in the Near East. So the Egyptians had a lot of problems with homosexuality. It was Forbidden. So he decided to uh, look in Egypt for Oedipus and he found him. Where? Well, the meaning of Oedipus, the name given to Oedipus, is swollen feet. And he actually saw swollen feet on the grave of one pharaoh, which is known as Amunhatap IV or Ahanatan. Now, What's the story about this pharaoh? Well, the story is quite interesting, 
and that's pure history. Now, um, Amon Hatab reformed the religion in Egypt. He decided that Egypt will uh, become mon a monotheistic religion, where the only god is Aten. Now, it is very important because uh, Aten was the sun god in uh, before it, well, he was declared the only god by Amon Hatab, who called himself Akhenaten, the son of Aten. Now, um, what is interesting that uh, the Judaic god, uh, which I previously called uh, Jehovah or Yahweh, actually is this name is read as Adonai, Adonai as the master, Lord. So actually, he probably worshipped the same God. Now, it is not unique in history. As I mentioned before, the Jews chose the word God, El, uh, after the main God in the Canaanite pantheon, El. And uh, even Muhammad founded Islam on the God, Allah, which actually existed in the pantheon of Paganic Arabs as the Sun God. So it's very probable uh, being the god of the um, largest astronomical figure in the sky, he's probably the main god, if the god of the sun. Anyhow, this Ahanaton uh, moved his capital from Thebes, uh, which was called Naamon, to Ahaton, which is called today Tel Amrana. What is interesting is that uh, in Tel Amrana, the findings, the archaeological findings, are all in Akkadic language. Akkadic is a Semitic uh, language spoken in uh, the region of Babylon about 6000 BCE. Uh, by the way, Akhenaten uh, was born in 1378 BCE. Now, Moses was about a hundred years plus minus after that, uh, but Freud believes that Moses is Akhenaten, an Egyptian prince who founds a monotheistic religion in Egypt and he has his group of followers, the Levites. I promised the Levites. Well, the Le Levi or Levi is the name of a tribe which is given the part of being the most important tribe and the priests are part of this tribe. Now, Levaya in Hebrew is escort. These, this tribe escorts God or escorts the priests. So it may be the most loyal tribe of Moses or Anaton in this case. So as Freud says, it's the same guy. What I actually mean is if uh, your name is Moses, which is uh, probable even if you're not Jewish because it's a very common name uh, in Protestant English families, uh, so, if your name is Moses, you're not only named after uh, the guy who practically invented uh, Judaism and uh, was the most uh, important prophet in Judaism, you're probably named after Oedipus, the biggest psychological complex ever. And if your name is not Moses, I would like to know what is actually your name. So, don't forget to email me or message me down there and subscribe to my page Shalom Yerushalayim